Attention, attention. We have an emergency. You have 60 seconds to clear the street. We are bringing through a swarm of killer bees. Close all doors and windows. Turn off all machinery and radio. Any noise will arouse them. Attention, we have an emergency. We are bringing through a swarm of killer bees. You have 60 seconds to clear the street. David, are you there? David. David. David, I was having a nightmare. I thought I was dying. Same old nightmare? Yes, only worse. Each time it gets harder and harder to breathe. Jeannie, that incident's over. Every one of those bees was destroyed. Right. In my head, I know it. But somewhere inside of me, I just, I don't know. I told Nick, some night I'm going to die in my sleep. Now listen, you've got to put it behind you. Once and for all, lay it to rest. You saw those bees destroyed. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. I wish you'd make a recording of that message, David. When Nick goes away on one of his flights, I'll put it under my pillow. Where is your roommate, the local Red Baron? He's out gathering provisions for our trip. Hmm, good. That gives us time. David? Hmm? I'm leaving on my vacation today. Nick is already at the airport getting the plane ready. Now, did you come by to say bon voyage or to put me to work? The mountain wouldn't come to Mohammed. Oh, oh, boy. You're putting me to work. If I don't get this grant, the National Bee Center closes down. But don't feel guilty about it. It's only my entire career that's at stake. strength of all her followers. In 1978, a queen bee possessed of a savage South American strain was accidentally carried to New Orleans during Mardi Gras. The swarm she bred caused seven deaths. It 
It was assumed by the National Bee Center the bees were destroyed, that no queen of the killer strain survived. What we're doing is building up our new queen cells even further. A little jelly from the Italian bees, and we get a more vibrant queen. David is becoming the Henry Ford of the bee world. New model every year, huh? New and improved, Mr. Groves. I'm Starrett. I'm Groves. Sorry. And where's Dr. Martin? He's late. Sorry again. Scratch that one. David, as much as I love Eli, that's a little too much Eli and not enough of the hive. That's a dozen you've eliminated. You ask my advice. I'm giving you my advice. You're utterly impossible. So fire me. Whatever happened to the brilliant but shy Miss Devereaux who sat in the back of my classroom taking her copious notes? She lost her mind. She went to work for her former professor. Do you have to be gone so long? Yes, I do. I really need you in the job, you know that. I know, David, but I have needs too. And six weeks alone with Nick is one of them. After a year together? David, hardly a year. Half the time he's away and the other half I'm away. To tell you the truth, we're afraid to make a commitment. And if we don't make one now, we're going to lose each other. So you see, David, I have to go. Can we get rid of that junk? I can't even see the screen. David, the junk stays. under one of the hives, number 112. None of the others? I don't think so. ask our visitors if they'd like to wait in Dr. Martin's office. supposed to take on vacation she went back to work on me you the replacement no what's your name queen of the bugs queen of the bugs <laughs> well queen of the bugs would you get up there and go to work aye aye sir now remember it's a plane it's not a boat okay i'll learn i'll learn you make sure you do the count of the dead workers in 112 is up two thousand percent what about the temperature? Ten degrees higher than average. Phew, that's a huge rise. The activity in there must be fierce. David, could a queen of another strain have gotten in there? And now her young are taking over the hive. A very much more dominant and aggressive strain. Like the South American? Possible. One queen? Where the devil could she have come from? The swarm is completely destroyed. Now, David. Sunshine, boys. 
Look, whatever is going on in that hive is apparently occupying every single member. Then get out there and find out what is going on. Give me all the data you can. Theories I don't need. Say no more. Good morning, gentlemen. I hope you haven't been waiting too long. And each spring, we send out queens to beekeepers in every section of the country to regenerate their hives. Which is why we've got to expand our program of crossbreeding. If we ever have another incursion of highly aggressive bees, we'll be able to neutralize them with a much stronger strain before they can kill anything or anyone. This way. The department's inclined to renew your grant, but under certain conditions. Not just a renewal, Ken. Don't forget, we've asked for a very necessary increase. We're the only center in the country that can process and identify dangerous strains. Uh huh. That brings us to certain objections which we have to raise. The department has asked us to review with you your uh, intentions regarding page, I think it's 17, the section on disclosure. Right. You say the dangerous bee incursion should not be reported to the media. Why? You see, that kind of secrecy could be interpreted as a cover-up. Are you saying that you are against public disclosure? Uh, I'm saying I'm against public misinformation. result of pollination by the bee. Now, if an enlightened public panicked by a well-meaning press started killing every bee in sight, this country would be in for the worst famine in its history. Doctor, you accept public funds for research. The public not only has a right to know what you're doing with the money, but what you know. Full disclosure, Doctor, if you'd like our recommendation. So, we'll be back later this afternoon, say uh, 5 o'clock. What have you got? Pulse is almost zero. Get that resuscitator going. My God. His mouth. 
mouth is full of bees. I'm afraid so. They're back, aren't they? I need you to help me find out, Jeannie. I know how much your trip means to you. No, it's all right, David. I'll be there. Nick? Nick, please listen to me. Nicky, please listen. Please listen, I've got to go back there. I have no choice. Please understand. You postpone our trip for the third time? You tell me about it when I come back from my vacation. This whole place, Dad. Tell me. But let's get started. We got a lot of work to do. David, I think Hive 112 is preparing to swarm. Get the ice fog. Right. And don't use your sirens when you leave, understand? No siren! do anything now. Stick their noses out that door and they'll think it's the depth of winter. Christmas in July. I'm going to start the analysis. We'll do a preliminary to see if any characteristics eliminate the bees as a South American strain. We'll never have time to do a full positive check. Four wing length, 8.7 millimeters. Femur length, 2.46 millimeters. Wing angle, number 39, 24 degrees. Wax mirror distance, 0.23 millimeters. <laughs> the general shape of the skull angular at antenna sockets. Tonight, when we're sure they're all home, we'll have to destroy the hives in the experimental areas. The whole row? The whole row. We can't afford to take any chances. And Paul, get a list of all the bees we've shipped in the last ten days. All right. in carrying capacity. One zero 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 four. It hardly seems like enough to kill. All right, run the tab, see if there are any negatives.
Discriminate analysis, total equals 4.0. There's no negatives, Jeannie. All the characteristics are positive for the South American strain. That's it. Three shipments. Three? Three shipments were already sent out? Paul, are you sure that the Queens came from Hive 112? I'm positive, Jeannie, that Hive was queened three times. The first nine days ago, again four days ago, and this morning early. I sent out the shipments to Haverson myself. In one season, they could spread across this country. Kill him. Are Stout and Grove still here? Maybe some federal... No, no, that way they'll create a panic, and that's the last thing we need right now. Somehow we got to get those shipments back ourselves. Where were they sent? Uh, Bakersfield, California, Las Lunas, New Mexico, and Jackson, Mississippi. Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? Halverson makes those shipping boxes by hand. If he hasn't sent out this morning's shipment to bees yet, they'll still be at his place in Hamilton Parish. Halverson, this is Paul Gladstone. <laughs> right. Listen, where is the shipment of bees I gave you this morning? Just sent my son to the post office up in Wakely Farms. Wakely Farms? Why? Usually ship Mayor Express, but this one's local mail. Well, how long will it take him to reach Wakely? About 25 minutes. Can you head him off? I can get the police to do it. No, 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 don't, don't do that. We'll send someone from here. What's the problem, Mr. Gladstone? Uh, uh, nothing, really. We just want to check out the shipment. Uh, wait a second. How about calling the post office and tell him to catch his son before he mails it? I'll try, but I don't think it'll do much good. Why? These are self-contained. Parcels pre-weighed and pre-stamped. All he has to do is drop it in the box. to race. Halverson, I presume. I'm Dr. Martin of the National Bee Center. I just spoke to your father. He asked me to pick this up. He uh, just didn't put enough stamps on it, that's all. <laughs> Not enough stamps. David, you're fantastic. I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> you know something? I think we deserve a break, don't you? I'd be lying if I said I was sorry you didn't make that trip. I know that. But we had a job to do. That's not what I mean. What? It, uh, it may be the wrong time to say this, and uh, I'm not trying to take advantage of your problems with Nick. I, I guess I've always been a little in love with you. And uh, now I, I, I feel... I just hope it's not too late to tell you. Oh, David, I don't know what to say. So funny. On campus, I had a terrible crush on you. Terrible. But you were married, and your wife is still alive, and you were such a proper man. Should that give me hope? I don't know. 
Oh, David, I... It's not very easy for me to handle this right now. Couldn't we just go ahead and do what we have to do? Okay. But you're gonna have to handle it one day. I guess I was stupid letting all those years go by. So don't wait too long, because I'm not getting any smarter. Whatever I decide, David, I think that you'll be the first to know. Almost three hours for you. Yes, well, we uh, ran into a small problem. What kind of problem? Oh, it's all straightened out. Thank you. We heard there was a death this afternoon. Well, I'll send you the coroner's report. We already have it. 300 stings. Looks like last year's problem popped up again, huh? I've only seen a preliminary analysis. Now, you damn well know what it was, and you didn't report it. Now, if the results show that South American bees invaded the center, and you have not made full disclosure, we will cut off your grant. What's happened, Paul? I hate to tell you. No luck with those two other shipments. I found one number through information, no answer. You sent telegrams too? Sure. Also to the freight offices. No replies yet from anyone. David, it's almost time. His work. There's still the others, David. We can build up again. Well, if we don't get the grant, at least we've cut down the overhead. David, I have answers from the freight offices. They call back one right after the other. Were the boxes picked up? Both shipments. They've tried to contact the people, but they can't be reached. Probably not till Tuesday. Not till Tuesday? Four days. It was the 4th of July weekend. Everybody's out of town. Look, we can't wait. The boxes were picked up days ago. In 10 days, the new breed will completely take over the hive. Call the airport. Get us in the first flight to whatever that place was in New Mexico. I'm sorry. I, uh, I assumed you're going with me. My bags are already packed. And 4th of July. Paul couldn't even get us on standby? Same thing, nothing until Tuesday. David, maybe we could drive to Shreveport and try to get a flight out of oh, there. Oh, we need a non-stop to New Mexico, not a milk run. David, don't snap at me. I'm just trying to help. Well, you're not helping. Well, what would you like me to do, sprout wings? Somewhere, there must be someone who... Nick. Where would he be right now? Um, I don't know. I could call his office. His service would know. Oh. Go ahead. David, I don't have the right to ask him. I, I don't even think I have the courage. You're afraid he'll say no? Hi. Nick? 
didn't get your message from the service till 2 a.m. when we got back from Baton Rouge. We? Whose apartment is this? An old friend's. An old friend's. I see. Well, you've got your work and I've got my friends. Right. Look, Nick, I have to ask a favor of you. David and I have to get to New Mexico as soon as possible, and there's no available plane. I can't tell you how bad the emergency is. That's the only reason you came here? Well, yes. No, of course not. Well, let me tell you something before you go any farther. I don't care about your work. And I don't care about your emergency. And I don't care about him. All I care about you. When did you start flying? When did Vietnam start? I don't know. 62, 63? That's how long I've been flying. You feel like talking about it? David, you don't have to make polite conversation with the driver. Okay, how about some impolite conversation? What's on your mind? Jeannie. I thought you ought to know. Is that a secret between you and me? No, I told her. picked it up. Well, do you know where this Earl Logan lives? Well, it's somewhere out towards Alamosa. Not too sure. Uh, you could buy a map. They're two dollars. No, we don't need a map. We need the address. Well, it comes with maps. Well, why can't you just tell us the address? On account of my husband sells the maps. Let's just pay the two dollars, huh, David? I'll pay for the map. No, you'll pay for the rental car. Well, the, uh, the car rental's closed for siesta. Got a good car. I can loan you, though. Cheap. Jay, why don't you try going around the potholes instead of through them? I said go around them. Did I tell you how to fly the plane? You got any complaints? Except for a couple of dozen air pockets, no. Would you stop it? The two of you are giving me a headache. That's it. Logan? That's me. Oh, we were just on our way to the pageant. <laughs> I'm Patrick Henry. My wife's uh, Molly Pitcher. Hi. What can I do for you? Uh, my name is Martin, David Martin. Uh, this is Jeannie Devereaux and Nick Willis. We're from the Bee Center down in Louisiana. You got a package from us the other day. Could you tell me, uh, have you opened the boxes yet? Exactly what is your business? I want to buy those boxes back. Why? Well, they're experimental sorry no deal well wait, hang on how much you want for those bees well it's, it's not the money folks it's just that they're all in place what do you mean well i put the new queen into a hive to get her working for a keep which hive <laughs> i got 110 hives working these fields i i don't know you keep records don't you now look here records are for fancy experiments I'm just an ordinary beekeeper. Farmers around here need me to plant hives in their fields. And that's what I do. Now, if you want those bees, you're going to have to check out all the fields. Be my guest. Well, now, be reasonable, Mr. Logan. Now, we'll, we'll, we'll pay you for the hives. We'll pay you well. Well, if you'll pay me well, then they must be something very worthwhile, right? 
wrong. Come on, mister. Now, I may be dressed funny at the moment, but I'm no fool. If it's worthwhile to you, it ought to be worthwhile to me. Or dangerous. Look, lady, I'm a beekeeper. Bees are not dangerous to me. Okay, Mr. Logan, you have it your way. We'll go check out your hives ourselves. Me? We don't have enough time. Yeah, we got the time. Come on, we got a lot of hives to check. I'll drive. Maybe I can miss some of the bumps. Do you have any idea how long it's going to take to find 110 hides? No, I don't. Then what are we doing? We're bluffing. That's what we're doing. Oh, my word. Would you please explain? All right, tell me. If I left something valuable in your closet and walked out of the room, what would you do? I'd search the closet. Exactly. Now, if I'm not crazy, our Mr. Logan momentarily be blasting down this road in that white van of his on the way to the hives to see his prize bees. What's he going to do? I'd say he's just checking for any unusual activity. You think he's going to load that hive in his van? No, no, not until sundown. Moving a hive during the daylight is like tampering with a live bomb. The insecticide won't be very effective out here in the open. Won't be in the open. You're going to use the cap of the truck? Uh -huh. David, we don't have the equipment to move the hive. We don't have the time either. Please be careful. Just put that hive down. This is private property. Put it down and get out of here. Keep going, David. You're going to have to go through me first, Mr. Logan, if you want to get to my friend. Nick. They're not going to back down.
the other window. There's insecticide in the truck. A green canister. the stragglers they'll fly back to the hive that's why we kept a window open to crack they'll come right back in the cab by the way that's one i owe you So, he picked up those bees 11 days ago. He didn't waste any time. You know where we can find him? No, he's general delivery. I don't even think he has an address. Great. I know his dad lives out toward Raymond, about 30 miles, a place called Dwelling Fork. Listen, you can borrow my car. I'm not going to need it this afternoon. Well, that's uh, very good of you to come On in. On one condition. Buy a couple tickets to our baseball game. The annual charity game between the city of Merced and the Darby Army Missile Base. We've been playing each other every 4th of July for the last 25 years. Series is tied 12-12. Going to be a biggie. Thanks, but we'll use our plane to look for Dermot. He's probably in the foothills around here someplace, working his hives for honey. Now, now, bees, settle down. This afternoon you'll have all the flowers you want. Make sure we don't lose any of you. Come on, Zach. search system from east to west. One Victor over. The Highway Patrol advised a 1957 flatbed truck is registered to a Finley Richard Dermott, California license Echo Kilo Delta 463. This vehicle was given a citation three days ago near Merced. They've put an APB out on it and you'll be notified if contact is made. This is 361 Victor. We copy. Over. Strain did take over. 
If anything had happened at the center, civil war in the hive, annihilation. And then what? They swarm. <laughs> too far in three days. We'll take a look down there by those trees. Real careful. There's no sign. see the binoculars for a while. Four of the other hides are empty now, probably more. And by this time, they could all be dominated by the new strain. If they join together. How many, David? <sighs> Over a half a million bees. Oh, God. Jeannie. David, the last time they prowled the countryside, they killed a farmer, they killed a little baby girl. We're just going to have to find them. How? Well, they have certain habits. For the next several hours, they'll stay together and be fairly easy to track. Easy? What do you look for? Water. They need that to live. They won't hide until they find it. You want to stop? Yes. But I won't. Do you have the cause of death? Affirmative. The man was killed by a swarm of bees. Anybody in the area should exercise extreme caution. They should be warned to avoid all contact with bees. If they see any, they should seal themselves in their houses or cars. And above all, refrain from making noise of any kind. Roger. Fresno copies. We'll do what we can to get this out locally, but with the holiday, everything shut down. Over. 361 Victor. Well, Simmons Lake should be our closest. We're just about there. I don't know if we can spot them from the air. We should be able to see the devastation. There it is. Their water source. Anyone within two or three miles of it? Will be... Come here. Look. Is that what I think it is? Yes. Easy now. David, I can't go down there. Yes, you can. No, I don't want to. Jeannie, we need you. We're a team. We're not going to quit now, are we? 
I don't... Uh, Do you remember the behavior study Valdez did? No, I don't remember anything. You broke down his finding. I can't stop You'll shaking. You'll be okay. It's not the same this time. Now, what did Valdez say David, about the movement please, of please leave me alone. Listen to me, David, Jeannie. David, David, I Jeannie, don't want to go down! Oh, yeah. Shut up! Jeannie? Come up here, honey. down there. That's all. I, I, I just don't want to go down there. I don't want to go down there. It's okay. Don't let me go. It's okay. Don't let go. Don't let go. We got to land in a minute. Um. community. At the very least, they owe us an explanation. Right. Now, what are you doing here? Is there some place we can speak in private? Why? Believe me, there's a very important reason. If there weren't, we wouldn't have risked our necks to land here. All right. Sergeant, get some bodies and push that plane off the field. thousand bees that can kill that's right and we have good reason to believe they're headed this way i believe that this is the most bizarre lie i've ever heard now, we have a real problem now what do you propose we do hey can we sell you a hamburger lady it's for charity no but there's something you can do for me well if it gets me a ride in that airplane you bet Yeah, okay, it's a deal. I want you to get your troop, and I want to organize a search mission. What are we looking for? Bees. So you just want me to believe you and call off the game with no official authority behind you? Colonel, you haven't got time to worry about authority. Well, why don't we just sit in our cars then and see? Because if there are any openings underneath or air vents, bees can get in. <laughs> the next thing you're going to tell me is that, well, it's all a communist conspiracy. Colonel, once they get here and start to attack, we'll have no way to stop them. This better not be a joke. No joke. Fellas, the scouts will come first. They'll be in small groups. Then what? Then they'll fly back to the main swarm. They'll report. 
and I'll leave the rest to food and water. But why do you think they're coming here? Because of that one. I'm sure glad I don't know what you know. Why? He's not be as worried as you look. Come on, boys. Let's uh, fan out and check the ground and the trees and the sky. You guys, come on with me. to go that way. Be very quiet, and I want you to get the rest of the boys. Come, quickly. Come on, fellas. Come on. in your houses. No! All of you, all of you, go home! Now look, he's right. We'll resume the game next weekend. We'll start with the fourth inning. Now let's go home. Come on, folks. Break it up. Let's go home and have the game next weekend. Come on, you two, go. Wait. Don't move. They're going to dive straight for that noise and those people. Well, how come? Because these bees hate noise and bright colors. They attack. Come on. Into the bus. And shut the windows when you get in. kids a little while ago. Oh, no. She could have found the bees. It's giving everybody a chance to get away. Hey, are you calling the bees here? They're going to come.
my son, Eddie. Have you seen him? I think he's with Eric. Were the kids on that bus, Boy Scouts? Yes, they were, Colonel. following us are just asking for trouble. They're not going to help us one bit. I have children on that bus. Like me. Going somewhere. With those bees chasing it. You can't turn them back. Why are they turning off? What's up there? An old missile base. We've got to keep going. We've got to get every drop out of this tank. Tell the boys to rock the bus side to side. Go ahead. Come on, guys. Looks like they're stopping. Nick, stop. As close as we can get.
Easy does it. Those bees will kill you if you get within range of them. Well, what about the kids? Come on, let's go get them. I said nobody goes beyond this point. find those air vents, we're like fish in a barrel, aren't we, lady? My name's Jeannie. I'm Eric. I'm awfully glad you're here, Eric. I want a full complement of fire engines here immediately. Out. <laughs> Believe me, there's no way we're going to get those people off the bus. The fire hoses will drive the bees off the bus, then we go in and grab the kids. And suppose you break a window, you get them all killed. Well, we won't. But you may be sure of that, I'm not. What about those canisters we brought? No good. We get to them through the air vents. It's highly toxic. What are we supposed to do then? Go home? Oh, just hold on. We're going to leave everyone on the bus. Nets? With live bait. B. And what does that mean? We'll need all that equipment we brought in the plane. Sergeant, get the jeep. Get to their plane. He'll tell you what they need. What else? A helicopter. Well, that's going to be a little harder, but we'll manage it. Colonel. Now, look. I thought we told you folks to stay up there. Now, come on, please. Now, get back. Come on, all of you. Get back. Back up there, please. <laughs> sealed cave or a, a well. And you're going to collect every last one of those bees off that bus. That's right, Colonel. Just you. With this. Your helicopter, if it ever gets here. A rescue chopper's on its way from the Coast Guard. What about a place for the bees? It's got to be airtight. The best, I guess, would be the missile test facility knocked out by the last earthquake. The vent tunnels might be just right. There's a section there where I can seal them off? I think so. Well, it hasn't really been reconnoitered since the quake. Any place else? No, that's the best. You're sure? Look, I'm as anxious as you are that this be done right and fast. 
for many reasons. Every one of those bees was destroyed, Jamie. We're losing air in here. What do we do? Jamie, 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 That suit is going to attract the bees. <laughs> no, Colonel. This is. It's a chemical called pheromone. The artificial scent of the queen bee. They can't resist it. They swarm to it. Nature sure is wonderful. Yeah. Chopper will be here in a couple of minutes, sir. Good. Things voice activated? Yeah, it's working. David, why don't you give me the suit and let me go down there? The bees are finally as attractive as you. This wasn't your war, remember? Don't be stupid. You don't know what's down there. You worried about me, or you just think you could do it better? Maybe a little of both. I started this mess, and I'm going to finish it. Let's quit fighting over the privilege who's going to get killed. Just give me the suit. I don't intend to get killed. But Jeannie and those kids will if you don't get moving. Give me the helmet. Heroes and lovers, both a little touched. Start spraying me with that stuff. Huh?
right in the airplane. Remember? Thank you. Oh, Rick. Yes. Thanks for taking care of my son. Fair enough. Your son took care of me. Thanks again. A miracle that we got out. And still one more. David? Yeah. observation room inside where we can watch him being lowered. Come on, let's go. Okay. 
David, can you hear me? Right. Which way do I go? You come straight toward us. Directly in front of you is the fire pit for the missile testing. And at the bottom of the pit, there are vent tunnels and pipes that carry fire retardant chemicals. Now go down the stairs, and you should be able to seal the fire pit door behind you. And after that, you're in the tunnels. Have you been able to check them? No, but uh, we think the south side has the best chance of being intact. Now, that's, that's a left when you get inside the tunnels. Close it up, Sergeant. David, is there enough air in the suit? Barely. Canisters of insecticide have been left next to the door. Can you see them? Yeah, I see them. from the exit about 300 yards he's about here
the South Tunnel. Yes, what is it? There's been a cave in. I, I can't get the hatch open. There's an emergency hatch in the ceiling 50 yards behind you. I'll go back to it. I'll try. <laughs> Yes, sir. Your earthquake was pretty busy down here. I don't think there's any way out. Get that team in there. Get him out. Okay, get him out. Don't do that. Keep that hat shut. This is Colonel Mangs. Go back. We're going to open up the tunnel and pull you out. Nick. Nick, are you there? I can hear you, David. Don't let them. We can make it to you, David. No. We can't let one of those bees escape. It's too late for me. There's a standby team just waiting to go after you. Just hold on. I've already... I've already inhaled enough of this stuff to take care of my nervous system for good. It's cumulative. I know how this chemical works. Jeannie. Tell him. He's right. You heard what he said, Colonel. Call off your men. Call him off, Sergeant. Aboard. Do you copy? Aboard. Jeannie? Yes, David? You'll keep going? With your work at the center? Yes, I will. I'm glad. David? We love... We love you. <clears throat> 